Hi, I'm Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and we're on our final stretch of our pin cushion palooza here with our social, social burden watch party. You'd think I'd be able to say that after four times of saying it, but uh, so this is the cutest little pin cushion I think we've made in our uh, collection. This is a beehive pin cushion, and this is done with a lot of different techniques. Now, we did do a technique on the leaves that I'm going to show you with a previous tutorial that we did, but I'm also going to show you another technique. So for those of you that haven't made the leap to take a home an embroidery machine yet, this pin cushion can all be done without embroidery. So you're going to love this and you're going to love making it. We put together kits for this and I just wanted to show you what is available in the kit to make the beehive. So first of all, you need a styrofoam egg. So the styrofoam egg is just a basic uh, craft supply item. And I did use an old steak knife to chop about one inch off the bottom of this. Also included a cardboard, thin cardboard piece, a circle. And there is a four inch uh, wooden fabric square and coordinating batting and all I did was just take that circle and kind of give about a half an inch uh, cut around there so you get that. Finally there are some items that are crucial to the beehive and first is the cording. This looks like rope but it's really been uh, covered in fabric. I We also even uh, gave you the bias pre-cut and the first thing that we're going to do is learn how to join bias pieces if you've never done that before. Also, there is, this is just plain cotton materials, 100% cotton. This is Palette by Wyndham, and it's this mottled uh, looking fabric. What we did is we took a piece of fabric, then we used heat and bond light and ironed it onto the back, peeled the paper off, and then put the wrong sides together to create double-sided fabric. And that is what you're gonna see on these leaves. The final thing in your kit are these pull flowers. Now this is a little piece of a pull flower from a Kimber, Kimber Bell collection. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. You're gonna get ample for your beehive, but we only need enough just to make the little flower on the top of the beehive. That does it for what's in your kit but you're gonna need a few other supplies. We do need some 26 gauge wire, 26 or 28 will suffice. You're gonna need some old scissors that you don't really care about. Always, no matter what I do, I need some little snips to cut threads. And then finally, to sew the cording around our rope cording piece, we are using Mettler Silk Finish 100% Cotton Thread 50 weight, and I took a little spool and just wound a little bit on my jumbo bobbin. Those jumbo bobbins hold so much that sometimes you just don't wanna wind them all the way. I also have a spool of Isocord Polyester Thread. This is a machine embroidery thread. We're gonna use this to couch over our wire around our leaves, and we're also gonna do another special thing with that, and I did, oops, Oop, oop, these things, I'm telling you, they jump right out of your hands. This is a full bobbin wound with this. Finally, 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 I keep saying that, but I really mean it this time. You're gonna need a glue stick. This is just for temporary holding things together. You're also gonna need three feet with your machine. You're gonna need your standard sewing foot number one, 1C or 1D, depending on what machine you have. That will be the standard sewing foot. You're also gonna need a leather roller. This is the most crucial part in making that cording because the cording that we're using is larger than a quarter of an inch. It's larger than 3 eighths of an inch. So we're gonna need something like this to really hold those pieces together. We're also gonna use this cordonnet foot. This is number 11 coordinate foot and this is going to go over the wire when we sew the wire around the edges of the leaf. And then over here is every crafter's best friend. It's a hot glue gun. You can see I spared no expense on providing you only the finest well-used hot glue gun and you're going to need a few sticks of hot glue. 
So I think I have everything, but hey, you know, as I get through these things, eventually I'm like, whoa, I forgot to tell you about something. Well, don't be surprised if that happens. But I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine. We're gonna sew some bias pieces together. So see you over there. In your kit, you're gonna get these uh, two inch strips that have been prepared, but they're not sewn together. And here is the example of a seam. When we put these together, we wanna to have a diagonal seam so that when it's folded over, it's not nearly as bulky. We're gonna sew right sides together. And isn't this buttercream fabric really pretty? This is from Amanda Murphy's Free Motion Fantasy Collection. We do carry this at the store. It's available in fat quarters and by the yard. I'm gonna line my material up right sides together, just like this. And I wanna sew along this seam here. So think of going from the little ditch there to the little ditch there. So let's turn this around and line it up under the presser foot. And then on my expansion table here, there's a center line and I'm gonna line that little V up with that. And there's no need to back tack at the beginning and the end. All right, so as you can see, the yellow material that we join together is actually going to create the fabric of the beehive itself. So we're going to take our cording and center that in the yellow material. This is cut on the bias, so this can be snugged up right nicely with that that cording, but we wanna start the cording in just a little bit like that because we're gonna cover that edge. I've put the leather roller foot on my machine and the leather roller foot is foot number 55. And another adjustment that I've made to the machine is I have taken my straight stitch, which is the stitch that I'm using, and moved my needle position five clicks to the left. Now I'm also going to be sewing with the bulk of the piping on the right side. And I'm using my freehand system to get as close to get that foot rolled around and perfectly positioned so that I can start to sew. I used my heat vanishing pen and a template for the leaf. This is gonna be found on your beehive pin cushion instructions that are gonna be on berninaofnaperville.com under our classes and events class handout section. And you have a big enough piece of this fused together fabric to make more than the required seven leaves. This is because if you have an embroidery machine, you're gonna to wanna to download our stump work file for your Bernina, Bernina embroidery machine. I, I made a version of this. It is on another YouTube video that we made on our YouTube channel. That version is uh, stump work all done in the embroidery module. So be sure to watch that tutorial so that you can learn how you can do that in your machine. But like I said, if you don't have an embroidery machine, this is a really fun project to make. So I'm gonna be doing this the manual way and I've cut out my pieces. I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm gonna trim out all of these leaves and then I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. Several things have changed with the machine since I was here last. I have the number 11 coordinate foot on the machine and the coordinate foot, if I take that off and show you the bottom, it's kind of hollowed out down there to go over cording. And that is essential in holding our wire in place. 
second important thing is that I'm using stitch number two with a stitch length of 0.35 and a stitch length of 3.3 with the needle in the center position. When I get started, I'm gonna leave about one inch of a tail of the wire hanging out. Then I'm gonna line up around this curve just lining up that cording inside that little groove that's created in the foot there. And so carefully get started. Now I've made five of these already, so I feel a little bit confident, but you wanna make sure that you're really looking at where that wire is when you get started. And just very carefully be turning the leaf and holding that wire right in front of the needle. And you adjust when you need to. When you get down to the tip of the needle, you want your needle to be on the left side of that cord, or sorry, left side of the wire. Then we're gonna turn, kind of pivoting with that needle, bending the wire for us. And now we're gonna pass down the opposite side of the leaf. Also notice that when the needle is sewing, when it swings to the left, it, it's going over the wire, but when it swings to the right, it goes over the wire, but off of the edge of the material. And now I'm back to where I can bend again. And now there is a little bit of lining up that you need to do with your wire when you get to the bottom of the leaf. I'm just going to use my bad scissors to push that into place and then cut my wire here. Hey, did you see where my wire's coming from over here? I put my wire on my freehand bar to hold that in place so that it's not all over my table. I just wanted to show you that. Now I'm just going to carefully sew over my wire and on this part I'm sewing over two layers of wire one more thing is that is what I call my first pass now I'm going to go around for a second pass and this is going to fill in any bits that you can where you can still see the metal Don't go too fast around the corners. Now go around this corner and then finish the bottom of the leaf. you would be okay with taking a few small straight pins and sacrificing them for the greater good. But I finished the sewing portion of the beehive pin cushion. And remember, this is the piece, this is the end that we started with. And I had you kind of recess that cording back in there. And that's because we're going to really fold this around just so we're covering up all of the edges of our cording. And we're gonna line this piece right up on the very top of the egg, and then you're gonna put a pin right in there, just like that. Then you're going to use your hot glue gun, 
and we're gonna start by just putting a dollop of hot glue on the top. And you know, we all know hot glue is, is very hot, so be careful with your fingers. And then this material is gonna sit up quite a bit on your egg. So what I like to do is just take a few little drops around the egg just to kind of start securing it in place as you wind your beehive bit around. And you just wanna keep going around and around and around on your egg until you have a tight beehive look. And not every edge needs to be secure, but you definitely want to kind of get it secure as you go around or else it can start unraveling through in time. And you want to try to keep it tight because then that's when it looks its best. And that's why we cut this piece on the bias was because the bias will really help it to wrap around that cording without as many wrinkles. And of course you don't want your cording to twist on you. So now I guarantee you Camilla's in the room here. She's probably going to start eating this before too long if I leave this close to the floor. All right, you're going to have to give me a minute while I reload my hot glue gun. But I want to show you that I have another pin and I'm just going to put that in there to hold it in place. All right, I got around my beehive and I think it looks like something now, right? So the main thing that we want to do now is take some of this cording out and tuck this under because we're going to glue this around, we're going to put our leaves down, and then we're going to cover it up so it's nice and flat. I trimmed some material and then I took my fingers and I just pulled as much of the white cording as I could to remove the thickness. And now I'm gonna trim that down some and pull my fabric back out and see how that's, un that's covered up my cording. And now I'm gonna glue the rest of this around as tightly as I can to that styrofoam base. Of this styrofoam with glue. And I'm being careful to put this down to cover and hold it in place without burning the you know what out of my fingers. And this silicone pad or Teflon pad is really good because now I can just lay that down nice and flat to set my beehive until the glue cools off. All right, now we're gonna go around the mountain with our leaves. So I'm gonna start here at that seam and I'm not overloading this with leaf and I'm sitting these a little further in than on my original. And you know, once again, this is warm. So you're gonna put that together nicely. Now we can curl the wires on these leaves to our liking as we get the, the piece assembled. And you know, the machine does such a good job with that satin stitch, it's becoming hard for me to see what the top and what the bottom was of the leaf. I made seven leaves. You may decide that you don't need seven. You might need six or five or 10. It's up to you. It's your beehive. You do what you want. It's coming together. I'm gonna put it on this pad again, just so it cools off, it stays flat. And while that's cooling, why don't we give some attention to our cardboard piece here. This is simply just like covering a button like this, but um, I want this to be a little bit flatter. So what I'm gonna do is take my batting and I'm gonna cut it right at the same size as the cardboard. And just because I have this and I love it, this is a little temporary glue stick. This can just hold that batting in place so I can work with it. 
And then I'm gonna do the same to this, just to kind of get it sticky enough to center it over that piece to wrap the edges. And you wanna to try to get a smooth edge but this dries pretty fast, so you only want to work in a few pieces at a time. I'm just trying to get a smooth circle. I don't want any too many points or anything like that, but I'm pretty happy with that. All right, my beehive should be dry by now. So I can take my button, and that's going to cover the bottom of the beehive. That looks like a sunflower, if sunflowers had green flower petals. All right, so let's... Get some glue on there. Well, wouldn't you know it? Isn't this just like when the bobbin runs out in the middle of a project? I can, but that gives me an opportunity to show you my little trick where I put a little bit of hot glue on the end of my stick and then join it with the other one so we can finish this project. Put a little mound of glue there. Make sure this buddy doesn't fall off. All right, so there we go, right in the center. And now let's press it down some more. Let's take our attention to our little pink flowers. And I'm gonna leave the tape on the end here. But what I'm gonna do, these are pull flowers. So what these are really meant to do is you pull them and they make a little flower. And I'm gonna do six petals. And now the point of this is that I'm gonna take one end and I'm gonna take the other end very carefully. Ta-da! So now I have a little flower that'll get glued to the top of my beehive. It's super cute. I only have one last little thing to add, and that's just shaping the leaves. We don't want them to be flat. We don't want this to look like a pancake or some weird kind of pressed flower. We want some different shapes on these leaves. It's even okay for them to curl out a little bit like that. I'm going to curl it around a pen like so, undo it, and then I can add this down to the base of my, my little bee. I could make several of these. I could even add little bees around my pin cushion. Well, I hope you enjoyed making this super cute beehive pin cushion. I hope you've enjoyed all of our pin cushion videos. I've certainly enjoyed showing you all of the new tips and tricks and fun things that the machines can do. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's really easy to remember. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And if you wouldn't mind, like, comment, and ring the bell to get notifications when we upload more videos. So for now, thank you for joining us. Have a great day, and we'll see you real soon.